Hello everybody, this is George with Melnix Automotive. In this video I would like to show you how to set up a timing belt on uh, any Honda or Acura J-Series engine. Uh, it could be 3.2 liter, 3.5 or 3.7 and uh, they're all pretty much the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put the belt on because uh, a lot of you have emailed me I do have a video that I did about a year ago and I didn't have a tripod at the time and I was doing it on the car so I showed everything except putting the back putting the belt back on it just I didn't have extra hands to help me uh, videotape it so I have an engine off the car and it's perfect opportunity for me to go ahead and show you uh, how to set it up um, you will have to look at three points, three timing marks on this engine. And uh, I'm gonna show those to you in a second. I used a Sharpie marker to, uh, went ahead and uh, marked them so they're a little bit better visible on the camera. Um, but if you take the plugs out, it'll be a lot easier for you to turn the engine afterwards. I didn't, and you don't have to do it. It just, uh, when you're done, you, you wanna make two full turns. All right, let's start looking at timing marks on these engines. All right, first one is on the rear cylinder head uh, that's facing the firewall. And uh, as you could see, there's a slot here on the sprocket. And there's also a little slot, which you can't see now because I used a Sharpie marker uh, that, I, that I marked. And this back plate right here, this plate, it also has a notch in the plate and I also went ahead and put the mark there with my Sharpie. So that's in the rear cylinder head. On the front cylinder head, very similar, just like the rear. The sprocket is a little different. And um, I'm sure you could see the numbers. This is number one, number six, number three, number five, number two, number four. You want to make sure it's at number one, okay? There's also a mark on this tooth here. On the sprocket but you can't see it obviously now because it's uh, the sharpies there and on this back cover there's also a, a notch on the cover and I also use the sharpie to mark it uh, to mark it so you guys could see a little better and the last timing mark is right on the bottom on a crank okay um, there's also the crank should be at 12 o'clock and there's a notch right over here and I use the sharpie I, I went down and there's also a little triangle right over here okay uh, if I had a laser with me I would have probably been, uh, been better at pointing though but uh, as you can see again timing mark here there's a little little dot it's also a little triangle okay and there's another one right in the back right in the block right here so you want to make sure that's at 12 o'clock and matches uh, like that so I do have my idler pulley my water pump and I do have my tensioner there but I'm gonna install my uh, I'm gonna show you now how to reset my hydraulic tensioner uh, which is here and if you buy a new kit that should be already reset for you um, if it's not if it's not um, if it's not reset um, then you have to reset it and just just watch the video um, how I the best way to reset it all right guys this is the easiest way to reset hydraulic uh, belt tensioner is like this as you can see there's a hole here and then the, there's a hole here so obviously this pin needs to be pressed into hydraulic tensioner here and it's pretty hard to do it the best way to do it is by obviously using a vise um, and uh, if you have a nail, I have a, I have a pin like this because uh, I've done hundreds of these. When you buy a timing belt kit, this should be included in your kit, okay? And this will be already reset. But let's say you didn't do the timing right or something that you need to pull the hydraulic tensioner off, you will have to reset it. And it's pretty easy. So all I do, I open up my Weiss. So I put it in my Weiss and I start compressing it.
till, till both of those holes match so I could stick my pin in there. So as you can see, my pin goes right through. I can release it now. And as you can see, my, my hydraulic tensioner is reset. And I'm not gonna pull it out because once I pull it out, it'll go off again. So now I'm ready to put it back on the car. So, okay. Uh, since we have it all reset, now I'm gonna go ahead and install it. It's a size 10, there's two black bolts that hold it in place. And if you get a new kit, like I said, this pin comes with it. If you don't have a new kit, you're just replacing a seal or something, then uh, you can use like a nail, something that could fit in there. But it has to be a hard metal. It can't be something soft that will bend. Because that there's a lot of force in that pin. Okay, so as you can see, my hydraulic tensioner is there, both of my pulleys there, my new water pump, um, and all my timing matches perfectly fine. I'm going to show you how I install the belt in just a second. All right, it's time for the belt. Like I said, Honda, in my other video, Honda makes a tool that you can lock both of these sprockets in place so they don't move, but you don't need to have the tool to get this job done. Uh, usually what I do, I either call somebody who could uh, hold a wrench for me. Uh, this sprocket usually wants to jump back. Um, most of the time it could stay in spot, but when you start fitting the belt, a lot of times a little bit of a uh, movement there and the sprocket jumps back so um, I usually either call somebody that's in the shop that could hold an open-end wrench for me size 17 on both of those sprockets while I fit the belt but most of the time I'm successful by myself uh, a lot of times they don't jump but if it's trying to jump on you get an extra hand and uh, have them hold it for you so now I'm gonna go ahead and fit the belt It goes right underneath the water pump, and right back to the sprocket. You want to make sure you get it right in on every single tooth. And when you're doing this on the car, it's a lot harder though. It's a lot harder and, and things like that. So, so then what I do, I pull the bottom sprocket off. It comes off fairly easy, okay? And there's a key. You don't want to lose this key. It's very important you put the back. And since I have this off, I'm going to try to zoom in and show you that little notch I was talking about. If you look at it, you could see it. That little dot right there, that's, it's supposed to match the 12 o'clock position. Okay, so now I have it on there, and I'm going to go ahead and put this key back in. And sometimes it's a, <clears throat> it's a little tricky. tricky. You have to have patience. I mean, this job, if you were to take it to the dealership with parts, they're probably going to quote somewhere around $1,200, because I know that pretty good. I've done already hundreds of these engines and things like that. Just fell out. And then, as you can see, I have my belt kind of uh, off of those pulleys. The reason why is um, I need to have a little bit of slack. And like I said, if you have two people helping you, they can kind of <clears throat> turn turn the sprocket by just by just the hair, just to loosen up the belt so you can get the ski in, and then they could put it back um, where it belongs. But since I'm doing it myself here. I'll just work with it back and forth. We just need to put the key in there.
Got my uh, key back in there. I'm gonna push the belt back on so it's sitting right in the idler pulley. And all I have to do right now, I wanna verify him one more time, make sure my marks match, okay? And I'm gonna take my camera closer. As you can see, that is matching. That's matching. And if you look right in the bottom, I'm gonna see if I could uh, get my camera right on it. And since I had my finger, as you could see, I had my finger on there, so the sharpie a little bit wore off. But this is the this is the that point, and this is that tooth. And if you follow my finger, and up, and we go, so we match that little triangle. So we're perfect. All we're gonna do right now, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull this pin out, and that will release the tensioner, and my belt will be locked. All right, you could see the tension on my belt. Okay, so I'm gonna set my camera back down and I'm gonna make two full turns. And this point here, this point, and the bottom will match after I make two full turns. It's gonna be two full turns on the bottom and it'll be one full turn, uh, one full turn on top. As you can see, the key slides very easily when everything is... Um, you, want, you want to make sure the key stays there um, when, when, when you put everything back. Uh, because if, if this key falls out, because right now it moves fairly easy. Because everything is it's just the way it's supposed to be. Um, but it will take two full turns. And if my marks match, I'm safe to put all my covers back on. I know for sure it will not bend valves because this is an interference engine. It will bend valves if you don't have, if they, you know, if there's an issue. So it will be hard to turn because I got my spark plugs in there. It's going to be a lot of compression. Just about there. All right, as you can see, I made two full turns on the bottom, and if you pull the spark plugs out, it makes it a lot easier. But I made two full turns, and look at my sprockets. Matches, matches, and my bottom also matches perfectly fine. So that's how you set up a timing belt on uh, any J-Series engine. If you have any questions, shoot us an email. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. This was George with Melnick's Automotive.